Hi, I'm Dr. B, and today I'll be talking about Ultram, otherwise known as Tramadol. I would like to invite you to join me in my vision, with the goal being that those living with substance abuse can prosper and live with dignity, hope, prosperity, and hopefully treatment. To do that, please go ahead and click and subscribe to our channel and click the bell as well. This morning I uh, got a little notice, a notification from Vice News. I do follow that channel quite a bit. I enjoy it. There's always wonderful controversial topics done really well in terms of coverage. And it was actually about, I believe, uh, the World Cycling Federation or the body that kind of monitors substance abuse. And they were talking about, interestingly enough, Tramadol, otherwise known as Altram. And there was this discussion about uh, this drug being a drug of abuse and they were going to ban it. Uh, in either case, you can find it on Vice News and it was uh, very interesting. And every once in a while, I get questions regarding Tramadol or Altram. I'll just continue to refer to it as Altram. And I just recently had two patients that were dealing very, very heavily with this medication. Um, and they were uh, looking for detoxes for this, which I'm still working with these patients on. Uh, so I thought it would be great to do a little bit of education on this medication uh, because there seems to be a lot of confusion out there. Uh, let's do again a historical approach. And I think that's interesting and gives insight to the drug in a different way that's a much more comprehensive approach. This uh, medication was uh, discovered in the 60s uh, and uh, you know eventually made it to the UK and the United States in the 90s, but it was discovered in a pharmaceutical uh, company in the 60s, uh, in Germany, I believe, again. And this is interesting because, now, I don't even know if I can say this, but Bayer Aspirin is who discovered heroin in the late 1880s and it was sold, heroin, was sold as a non-addicting cough suppressant. And if you, if you, fa in fact, if you look up the name heroin, its linguistic roots, it means heroic. And that's because the guys that took it in the laboratory, because they were testing it on themselves at that time, they fe felt quite heroic after taking heroin. And so the rest is history, right? World War One, a lot of trauma, a lot of uh, uh, pain, heroin, etc. So I just thought that was a little interesting historical tidbit. But uh, in that same way, Altram, Tramadol, was discovered in, in a laboratory, pharmaceutical laboratory in Germany in the 60s. I believe it was 1963. Let's move fa fast forward a little bit. The point of the drug was for mild to moderate pain. In the 90s, you know, it's when really the marketing took off in the United States and I believe UK, but it was really marketed as a non-addicting viable alternative to opioids. Now keep in mind, this drug is a non-opioid opioid receptor agonist. What do I mean by that? Its chemical structure is not the traditional opioid form, whether synthetic, semi-synthetic, or natural. It's a different, different chemical structure, but it does have some effect on your opioid receptors. In addition, as a, just for completion's sake, this medication is also a serotonin and a norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. I'm not going to get into much, too much, in, I'm not gonna get into that at all, but do know that this medication does hit your mu opioid receptors, which are the same receptors that Roxy's hit, which is the same set of receptors that heroin hits, hydrocodone hits, fentanyl hits. Keep that in mind. Came out as a mild to moderate pain medication, sold off as a non-addicting opioid in the 90s, a uh, pain medication. Why is that itself interesting? Well, it's very consistent with the history of the way these things are marketed. I'm going to use an analogy here, and I'm gonna use an analogy from the class of sedative hypnotics. And you can look at one of my other videos to know what that class means, but that's basically barbiturates and benzodiazepines. Barbiturates were sort of the sedative anti-anxiety drug of choice and, and marketed under many, many, many other things until the 70s when 
Valium type of medications came about. And the barbiturates, we knew they were highly addicting. And we also knew that it didn't take much more than the dose prescribed for your respiratory depression to go down enough where you overdose. Now Valium comes out in the 70s and those of you old enough know that there was an international sensation. Hey, we have a really non-addicting counterpart to barbiturates for sedation, for anxiety, for hysteria. You name it, If you, if I wish I would have pulled up some of the ads. You name it, it was marketed as such and every housewife on the planet became addicted to Valium. And then, you know, the other benzodiazepines uh, are there as well. Now we know Xanax is the one we all worry about, but they're all in the same class. So we found out that Valium is highly addicting. And today we have the hidden epidemic of benzodiazepines. Next thing you know, in the 90s, the Z drug counterparts to Valium, Xanax, Clonopin, whatever, benzodiazepines came out for sleep ambient type of medications we call those the z drugs those were also marketed as well this is non-addicting and you can take this stuff and you can go to sleep and there's not an issue well today we know very well that not only is it addicting but you really can't be on any of those medications for more than seven to ten days i'm using that as an analogy now let's go back to our altram slash tramadol in the 90s, it starts getting heavily marketed. Hey, this is a great medication. In fact, it's non-opiate and it's great for mild to moderate pain. It is true <clears throat> how it turns on the opiate mu receptor is about 10 times less powerful than morphine, but nevertheless, it's hitting the opioid receptor. And that being said, for those vulnerable and the potential for addiction is 100% there. And so uh, today uh, we know very well, and now you're starting to see the risk medication labels on it from the FDA and the FDA warnings about this medication. This medication, you can, for all practical purposes, think of it as an opioid. So, you know, I would get people coming into the office. Hey, can I have that non-opiate stuff, Ultram? Uh, it, it's the same thing, has the same potential for abuse, for addiction. In addition, it has all the same withdrawal effects potentially for a lot of people as, let's say, hydrocodone, morphine, heroin. Now, somebody might see this and say, no way, I take this stuff, it's not an issue. Again, it's a lot less powerful than heroin than morphine, than fentanyl, but it's the same pharmacological effect, the same physiological addictive properties, and for many, many people, potentially the same withdrawal effects. And I think it's really important to note that, one, I think there has to be this education about this medication. Tramadol is something that hits your opioid receptors. When they sell it off as a non-opioid pain medication, they can say that because by chemical structure, it's not in the family of opiates. So I can say, here, take this. It's a non-opioid pain medication and people can just inhale it. So A, that's not true. Uh, B, I think it's a very important historical lesson here where we saw it with the class of sedative hypnotics, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, and then Z drugs, the sleep medications where they were all addicting and had the same potential side effects. Well, this is the same issue here. Uh, I think one of the areas that people were using it heavily to treat is fibromyalgia. Now, sure, it works on some people. Sure, some people may not develop an addiction for it, but we can say the same thing about any opiate, any benzodiazepine. We can say that about alcohol. And those of you that haven't been affected by this or haven't seen the dangerous consequences and side effects, this doesn't necessarily apply to you. But we're talking about metadata, which means the greater number of people and the greater number of good. And in that case, we can simply say that tramadol is an addictive medication with the same potential side effects as opiates. And it also has some other side effects. For example, it lowers your seizure threshold. 
For example, it, he it hits the serotonin and the norepinephrine reuptake channels. Tramadol is something that you can think of as an opiate. It is addicting. It is a milder version of morphine, but nevertheless, be extremely cautious. If you're taking it, take it under the supervision of a physician. There are a lot of people that are dealing with the, uh, the addiction of this medication and be careful. And I, I just want to educate everyone about the truth about this medication. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed that, please go ahead and click below for some of our other videos. And let me please remind you, please subscribe and ring the bell. We are a nonprofit endeavor here with the goal of education and reaching out to the substance abuse community. Have a great day.